In this video, we'll be going over the combined gas law. The equation for the combined gas law is P1V1 divided by T1 equals P2V2 divided by T2. P is the pressure, V is the volume, and T is the temperature. So you use the combined gas law when the pressure, the volume, and the temperature are all changing at the same time. Some guidelines for using this equation. Temperature has to be in degrees Kelvin. And again, to get to degrees Kelvin, it's degrees Celsius plus 273. The units of pressure one and pressure two have to be the same, and the units of volume one and volume two has to be the same. Let's take a look at an example problem. Suppose you have a sample of a gas at 303 degrees Kelvin. So we have a temperature here. Let's say that's temperature one. In a container with a volume of two liters, that's volume one, and a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, and that's pressure one. The sample is moved to a new temperature of 340 degrees Kelvin. So that's T2, that's the new temperature. And then the volumes also increase slightly to 2.1. So that's V2, the second volume. Now it's asking us for what's the new pressure, P2. So in this problem, you have the temperatures changing, the volumes changing, and then also the pressure changing. And that's the indication of the UST combined gas law. Now that we've labeled all the variables, let's plug in the numbers into the equation. P1 is 760 millimeters mercury. I highly recommend adding the units too, because then you'll catch yourself if the units are matching up and canceling out or not. The volume one is two liters, let's just say 2.0 liters. And then the temperature is 340 degrees Kelvin. That's already in degrees Kelvin. We don't have to do any, do any modification. Then that's gonna equal P2. That's what we're trying to solve for, because it's asking us for what's the new pressure. Volume 2 was 2.1 liters. And then temperature 2 is 340 degrees Kelvin. Oh, my mistake. Temperature 1 is 303 degrees Kelvin. And then now it just becomes an algebra, prob algebra problem where we're isolating the, the, the pressure. So when we have the variable on the top, we just have to get the, rid of the other two. And if something's on the bottom, we can just cross multiply it, bring it to the top. And the 2.1, since it's already on top, we can just divide and bring it, bring it to the bottom. So that means that the the new equation is going to be e that times 340 degrees Kelvin, and then on the bottom you have 2.1 liters as well. Then we can just mul multiply the top and then divide by the bottom, um, and that should give us the the P2. And when, when you're doing this on the calculator, what you can do is you can put all the top numbers in the parentheses. So you do like that, multiply all the numbers on top in the parentheses, and then divide and have a parentheses around two bottom numbers. That way the orders of operation will be correct. And then when you do that, it comes out to 812 millimeters of mercury. It, it's millimeters of mercury because the liters cancel out, and then also the degrees Kelvin cancel out. So you're left with just millimeters of mercury. Let's take a look at another example problem. This next problem reads, you collect a gas at 620 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury is a unit of pressure, so that'll be pressure one, and 13 degrees Celsius, temperature one. At the time of collection, the gas took up a volume of 13 or 1.3 liters, and that's volume one. What would the new temperature be, T2, of the gas in degrees Kelvin, if the pressure is increased to 1.2 atm? So that's the, that's the new P2 and the volume is decreased to 0.85 liters, and that's uh, V2. So here we have pressure changing, volume changing, and temperature all changing. So this is another indication we're gonna be using to keep the combined gas law. For this problem, I'm actually, there's, there's gonna be a lot, a, a lot more happening. So I'm gonna write all the, the variables over here. P1 is 620 millimeters of mercury. P2 is equal to 1.2 atm. Uh, V1 is equal to 1.3 liters, V2 is equal to 0.85 liters, T1 is 13 degrees Celsius, and then T2 is equal to question mark. That's what we're trying to solve for. The reason why I'm doing this is so I can check if our requirements are met. Are our temperatures in Kelvin? Um, no, so our temperature right here is in degrees Celsius. We're going to have to add 273 to that to, that to get to Kelvin. So we add 200. 73 to degree to 13, that's going to give us 290 degrees Kelvin. 
Next, are the units of P1 and P2 the same? Now, P1 is in millimeters of mercury, P2 is in ATM. So they're not the same. I'm going to convert them both into millimeters or into ATM. So I'll take 760, I don't know why I said that, 620 millimeters of mercury multiplied by one ATM over 760 millimeters of mercury. And then that gives us 0 0.815 ATM. Uh, this works because the millimeters of mercury will cancel out. And in every one ATM, there's 760 millimeters of mercury. And then if you're having trouble with that, just check out my pressure conversion video. So then now the pressures are both the same. How about the units of volume? Are they the same? Um, and yes, they are 1.3 liters and 0.85 liters. So now that all the requirements are met, let's set it up. So I just took these numbers and I plugged it into the equation. And our variable is T2 is on the bottom. Whenever your variable is on the bottom, what you're going to have to do is cross multiply. So we're going to cross multiply here and cross multiply here. And let's rewrite what that would equal. And that, that would equal this. It'd be this, these two numbers times T2 and then these numbers times 290 degrees Kelvin. Now that the variable is on the top, we're going to want to isolate that. So we're, we're going to want to get rid of these, these two. And the way we get rid of that is we're just going to divide those from both sides. So we'll divide that on the left and we'll divide that on the right. And when we divide that, these cancel out, this cancel out. So we're left of T2 equals these three numbers multiplied together divided by these two numbers. And then to put this into the calculator, you can put a parentheses around the top three numbers and then put a parentheses around the bottom two numbers. So it'll be these three numbers multiplied together divided by the parentheses of these two numbers multiplied together. And then when you do that, you should get 279 degrees Kelvin. And that's going to be our final answer. So that's it for combined gas law. So just know that the, the equation is this right here, P1V1 divided by T1 equals P2V2 divided by T2. This is relevant when the pressure, volume, and temperature are all changing in the problem. And remember that temperature has to be in degrees Kelvin, the units of P1, P2 has to be the same, and the units of V1 and V2 has to be the same. And then after that, it just becomes algebra. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.